I'm one of these more frequently encountered 21st century uh, syncretic kind of multi-faith people. Um, I don't really have just one tradition that has shaped me and that I feel a connection to. There are two most strongly, but actually virtually every tradition I study, when you study a tradition for years and you really want to open yourself, at least I want to open myself up to it and not keep it at arm's length, um, it changes you. They change you. They all have contributed in some way. But just to start with the two that are my personal traditions, um, the first one is that I'm Jewish. So I was born into a Jewish family. Um, we were Reformed Jews, so that means we weren't deeply observant. We didn't um, keep the Sabbath. We didn't strictly keep kosher. There were certain things I didn't grow up eating, but uh, it wasn't like I need to be observant. And I was never, from the time I really started questioning, I would say not, I was not comfortable with theistic language. I, it just didn't speak to me. I guess maybe it was partly how science-oriented I was, how skeptical, how questioning, but just the way that I was taught to conceive of God, the biblical God, rewarding and punishing and, and intervening in the world, uh, you know, it did not speak to me. So um, for me in that sense, being Jewish, uh, and now I think I, over time I've even become more deeply connected with it. Back then I was like, well, by the time I got to college, I really didn't do much with it at all. I'm like, I don't believe in God, but there's so much more, you know? So it's, it's a, the connection, for example, uh, just the beauty of the tradition, the sense that that's where I come from, these are my ancestors and it made me who I am. My wife does genealogy, you know, so when she talks about my side going back to my great-great-grandparents, everything they went through to come to this country, you know, to um, start a life here and my parents to make it possible for me to get educated, that's really important in Judaism. Education is so important, family is so important, tradition, ritual, all those things are deeply important. They speak to me. So I try to keep that alive in my household. We still do a Passover Seder. You know, we talk about the significance of the holidays. I want my, my kids, like my students, to be somewhat biblically literate. Um, so that has shaped me in those ways. But when I first encountered Buddhism, um, to me, that was one of those epiphanies of, whoa, that's how I look at the world. You know, the idea, the, you know, non-theistic form of Buddhism, the early teachings of the Buddha especially, but just the emphasis on impermanence, on, you know, sort of the psychological analysis of the sources of suffering through a grasping. I mean, all of that made sense. And so the texts would often say, right, that the key practice, some of the texts like Zen or, you know, some Theravada texts, that meditation is like the central, centrally important practice. So that you don't just read about these things and think about them, you see them for yourself. You know, it's, it's ga gaining insight into the nature of reality through this type of observation. And you can only read a text saying that to you so many times, like you should really meditate to understand this. And when you, before the bell goes off and you're like, I think I should try meditation. So that's what I did. And um, from the time I started to, to, I was part of a Zen community and then a, here I'm part of a Vipassana community. So I've had a Buddhist practice, you know, since, well, it's been, you know, 25 years or something. I'm like an evangelist for pluralism. I, one of my jobs in every classroom is to show students all the powerful truths that lie in the different traditions, even if it's not for them. Even, you know, if they're not, I'm not ever expecting people to just, oh, I want to become that, I want to convert, but rather to open yourself up to its beauty and its power. You know, why has this tradition spoken to so many people through so, you know, many years or centuries or millennia? Um, I want to open people up to that. And so I think in the end, if I can do something to dissolve boundaries between traditions, and that might be like maybe that, if I had to pick in an odd way, like a theme to so much of both the work that I'm doing and what I try to, you know, what I've discovered, I guess, through practice, is there are no boundaries. There's just no boundaries in life. Like all the practices, like meditation, result in seeing what looked like a solid boundary is permeable or ultimately dissolves. So if you recognize that, interdependence is right there, right? Nothing is closed off. Everything is connected. So to start to have students see that these other traditions aren't truly other, 
that they can, through imaginative, empathetic study and inquiry, see what's beautiful and powerful in them. We call that in our department uh, the imaginative insider's view of a religion. To try to c get inside of it as much as possible, you know, which requires imagination and empathy, to, to ask yourself, like, why, you know, what would it be like to live this tradition? What if I, this was the text that was guiding me in life and true? So it leads you to ask those fundamental questions. It can be transformative. And I think that's always a possibility when you take a religion course, you know, that your life can change.